Hi, Valley View family. We are so excited to worship with you tonight on Good Friday. Uh, we very much miss worshiping with you in person. We miss seeing your faces in person and giving you hugs and seeing your expressions and hearing your voices in worship along with us. We sincerely miss that, but we are excited to worship in your home with you again tonight for Good Friday. Good Friday, a day that is solemn and holy and serious, but it's good. It's good because Jesus is good. It's good because his sacrifice was good. It's good because his love for us is good. So we're going to come together and worship tonight. Um, if you need to pause this for a second to position yourself and your family in a place of worship, in a position of worship, worship please do. Um, we're just going to spend some time remembering the sacrifice he made, remembering why, and thanking him and bringing Jesus praise for it on this Good Friday.
Valley View family, thank you for sharing this time of worship with us, and I want to take this moment to share a few thoughts uh, to help us remember today and the purpose of our Messiah and the purpose of the cross. About 700 years before Christ was born, a man of God had penned uh, these prophetic uh, verses about a future hope and a future Messiah, not just for Israel, but for the world. You can join me in Isaiah 53, verse 3, he says, He was despised and rejected by men, by men. He was a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. 
and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before her shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In verse 10, he says, Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. I want us today to remember and focus on one person alone today, and that is Christ. This day is about remembering who he is, who he was, and what he did. The next thought I want us to focus on is the idea of punishment. In Luke 23, while, while Christ is hanging on the cross, in verse 41, one of his own um, criminals hanging next to him, he says this, We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. We read in Isaiah that it was the Lord's purpose to punish him and to crush him and to cause him to suffer. I want us to know and to realize that that was supposed to be us. Even the criminal on the cross recognized, we deserve this, but this man does not. Christ did not deserve that punishment. He took that shame and he took that guilt. He took that, that suffering for our sake. And the last idea I want to share is the idea of love, the idea of Christ's love. In that same chapter, but in verse 39, one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. What that criminal didn't realize is the Messiah was saving him. He was saving all mankind. And it was the love that kept him there, not his pride and not his ego. It was that criminal that he was dying for. We were that criminal. We are that criminal. And in Romans 5, 8 through 9, Paul writes this. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You realize it was, it was Christ's love that led him to the cross And it was Christ's love that kept him on that cross. As we meditate today and we think of one person alone, that is Christ, I want us to also focus on, two, the punishment that he bore for our sake. And three, I want us to meditate on the love of Christ. While we finish out this day and we look for the hope of that Easter Sunday, I do want us to take a moment as a family and as an individual to sit in a solemn state and just recognize the love of our God, the punishment he bore on our behalf. Don't let it lead to a worldly shame and guilt and sorrow, but instead let it lead you to a godly sorrow that brings repentance.
today, the sacrifice that you made. We remember the price you paid willingly. Because you love us, because you love the Father, and you love us. And so we come and we remember today, and we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your sacrifice that turned things around. We thank you for your sacrifice that saved our lives, that made a way when there wasn't before. So we come and we remember. Jesus, help us live lives of remembrance. Always remembering the sacrifice you made and the reason you made it and what it cost. What it cost you for our gain. May we live lives of remembrance every single day. But God, we thank you for today. Jesus, we thank you for today. And we thank you for you and your love for us. And we remember you are good. In Jesus' name, amen.